हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी डीलिंग विथ अ केस विच हैड अ प्री एग्जिस्टिंग पोस्ट ए कैप्सुलर रप्चर सो आई विल टीच यू हाउ टू डू एंटीवेट्रेक्टोमी इन सच सिचुएशन एज वेल एज विल टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू प्लेस दी आयल इन सल्कस एंड वेन टू डू ऑप्टिक कैप्चर सो दिस इज अ थर्टी फाइव ईयर ओल्ड पेशेंट ब्लंट ट्रॉमा सिक्स मंथ्स बैक विथ यूनिलेट्रल कैट ट्रैक ईड ऑफ आयल वॉज प्लान इन दिस केस एंड आई एम गोइंग टू गो अहेड विद द सर्जरी इट्स अ वाइट कैट ट्रैक इट्स नॉट इंटीमेसेंट एंड I am planning to do around 5.2 to 5.3 millimeter central rexis to have a good centration of the IL in the post-operative period. Whenever there is a history of uh, trauma, and also in case uh, there is a unilateral cat track, we always should expect some unexpected things during the procedure. And here I am not going to do hydro dissection, but what I did, I just uh, push. very very minimal fluid under the entry capsule just to have little cleavage there and uh, i am going to do train divides a very soft cat track and now being a white cat track i expect the nucleus to start rotating by this point even if i have not done any hydro dissection so that is my experience so why i think i will just show you in uh, another video so here i am trying to rotate this nucleus but it's not rotating and uh, i am just trying to aspirate the nucleus here which is very soft but uh, i am little concerned why the nucleus is not rotating and why i am concerned is because uh, just have a look at a similar case and uh, in such cases where it is a white uh, cataract we generally expect that the nucleus rotates very easily even without any hydro dissection like in this case you can see so i know the pattern which should be followed here and it's not following the pattern of uh, easy nucleus rotation so i decided that i will now do some hydro dissection so there is some cleavage between the capsule and the uh, lens material and now i start uh, the fake aspiration again and you can see now the nucleus is separated and i can aspirate it uh, easily but as soon as the nucleus gets dislodged from the bag you find that there is a posterior capsular rupture there and uh, you can see that uh, there is a edge of pc tear there and uh, it is already open and uh, it is getting enlarged if i try to aspirate more so at this point i immediately stop because i know that if i continue there is a chance that vitreous will prolapse now so i have to now replenish the anterior chamber with the uh, ovd before i remove the phaco probe there so that is a aqueous visco exchange as we call it this is to maintain the anterior chamber as i withdraw the phaco probe this avoids uh, further prolapse of the vitreous and now uh, i will analyze the situation so already there is some nucleus matter which is still there and you can see a small chunk which is uh, behind the posterior capsule there and that is a concern for me because i don't want that soft part of the cataract to drop down it may need vitrectomy otherwise so what i do is after i replenish the viscoelastic in the bag with sinski i nudge this uh, small nucleus piece into the anterior chamber and now i will be going ahead with a vitrectomy probe but what i am doing here is i enter through the main incision the idea is not to make the chamber deep before i take out this particular piece which is trying to go into the vitreous so there is some leak from the main incision but i am trying to keep the main incision close by tenting up the vitrectomy probe there and the first thing i want to ensure is i take it out of the 
back this particular nucleus which is soft and I can cut it with the vitrectomy probe. So going through the main incision here helps me in avoiding the nucleus piece going into the vitreous because there is a pressure gradient which has formed between the anterior chamber and the main incision. So the fluid will try to pass through the main incision rather than pushing these nuclear pieces into the vitreous. So whenever there are free pieces and uh, you want to take those out with vitrectomy probe it's uh, better to use the main incision of course taking care that the AC doesn't collapse. So we have to have good control over the vitrectomy probe. Once the separated pieces are taken out I go from the side incision and what I am doing here is I am going to aspirate the epinucleus and the cortex using the vitrectomy probe. So every case is different here the nucleus is very soft which I can easily cut using the vitrectomy probe. If it is hard then we may have to enlarge the incision or make a scleral tunnel to take it out. You can see the principles of doing that in my other videos. I will share the link. So once uh, the vitreous is cleared from the anterior chamber we have to aspirate the cortex and now here what I am pointing is the fibrosed age of the PC tear which indicates that it was a pre-existing tear and that's why you see that fibrosis which will not be there in a fresh PC tear which I might have caused during the procedure. So the PC rupture happened because of the blunt trauma and then the PC got fibrosed and now it opened up as I removed the cataract. So you have to be thorough and when you are taking out this cortex, when you are toggling between the IA and the vitreous cutting mode, uh, you have to make sure that uh, you take everything out in one piece because if you have small pieces like you can see here a small piece may just drop down like this one so you have to be very careful you have to keep aspirating and uh, cutting the small pieces there so this is how it is there is a fibrous PC and pre-existing PC rupture now which has extended to the periphery so I am going to place IL in the sulcus but should I do optic capture or not? That depends on the size of CCC. If it is small, ideal is 4.8 but it should be less than 5.2 and CCC should be well centered then I will do optic capture. So you have to pre-plan because if you are going to do optic capture then you have to use the same emetropic IL power but if you are not planning to do optic capture then reduce the IL power by 5% to have the best possible post-operative refractive correction. So we don't want patient to land up with very high hyperopia or myopia. So choose the IOL, decide whether you want to place the IOL with optic capture or not. Always use three piece IOLs and always use adequate size of the incision. Keep the Sinsky under the IOL as to avoid the IOL getting through the PCR into the vitreous. Open the IOL in the AC and always dial the haptics close to the iris and not to push it directly into the sulcus. If the anterior capsule is also ruptured, don't dial but just pull and release the haptics into the sulcus. So we'll go through uh, the steps. First is use the adequate size incision. So I have enlarged the size of the incision. Keep the Sinsky under the IL as uh, to avoid IL going through the PCR. I have opened the IL in the AC and now I am going to dial the haptics very 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 close to the iris so that uh, I know for sure that it is going into the sulcus. So this is particularly useful when your the anterior CCC is large. So sometimes the IL haptic by mistake might go into the bag and then IL may drop into the vitreous. So make sure that whenever the haptics are being dialed just watch how close they are to the iris almost rubbing the iris while they go into the sulcus. Tips for doing optic capture is that as I already mentioned the CCC must be well centered and maximum 5.2 millimeter ideal is 4.8. Remove the OVD behind the aisle first though this is not must but it is better so that uh, to avoid any IOP spike post operatively push one side at a time and at the end the CCC, the anterior CCC should become like a spindle. So it should not be quadrangle, it should be a perfect spindle that indicates that the optic capture is now complete. Maintain the anterior chamber because if AC collapses, optic capture 
may not happen that means the optic may get out of the capture so always if there is a ac collapse again check it so now i am pushing the optic through the anterior ccc here on both the sides and uh, I have to tap it down so that the anterior CCC becomes exactly like a spindle. Now it's quadrangle. Now it has become like a spindle. You can see that that uh, the anterior CCC is like a spindle, and that means that the optic capture is now complete. I'm just checking with diluted tramsulone for any trapped uh, vitreous strands there, and uh, I thought that I will clear off some more viscoelastic from the anterior chamber here so I'm using bimanual but uh, you will find that as the AC collapses here the optic comes out so that means on one side the optic capture is not there and we have to carefully watch this before we close the surgery so I have to tap the optic again back into the captured position and then I have to make sure that the incisions are well hydrated and the AC is going to be well maintained. If required, just suture it because any shallowing of the anterior chamber will mean that the optic will come out of the capture and sometimes we may have a tilted IOL. So this is a great video for learning how to place the IOL in the sulcus and how to do optic capture, what are the precautions, what are the steps. So keep watching the YouTube videos, do subscribe and please do comment on my videos. Thank you so much.